Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show y'all how to make a mask out of leather. So I've made a template in this shape out of foam. Um, all of my templates are available as digital download content to my $10 and up patrons, but also I'm posting them for sale up on my Etsy as well. Um, or you can kind of get a rough idea of it and draw your own. I made the eye holes on this one like super huge because as a glasses wearer, I've never really been able to comfortably wear masks because like blind. Um, but it looks kind of dorky. I'm just going to say that's just me in a nutshell, I guess. Um, you <laughs> is always an option, but at least I can see. Um, but also I like the wide eyes because it lets me put on a uh, giant eyelashes whenever I'm doing costuming and stuff. But feel free to modify my templates or create your own, however you feel inspired to. But test it out in foam first. This is a one millimeter or two millimeter, sorry, uh, foam just from like Hobby Lobby. Uh, all the tools and materials will be listed down below, but I've gone through and I don't know if you can see, super lightly you can see that I've scratched this with an awl onto some like three millimeter thick vegetable tanned leather. I go with vegetable tanned because it's, as long as you don't get it milled, um, it's pretty stiff and it lets you wet mold it. Like this is a leaf that I sculpted yesterday so you can see how it holds its shape and it takes a variety of different colors of stains very well. So that's what we're using and I'm going to get the camera flipped around so that y'all can uh, get a better view and we're going to move forward with this. <laughs> so after going through and scratching out the like tracing the edges of the mask onto the leather. Um, you can see here my foam template, I ran out of foam, so I had to extend the tip out just a little bit further. But we can just move this off to the side. Today's all, I'm actually using an old dart because check out that tip, it's perfect for this. Um, but now I'm gonna be going through with a variety of different sizes of hole punches to cut out these inset areas and I have this is a 5 30 seconds hole punch that I do in the smaller spots and then you can see I'm on a granite board with a very thick cutting mat like cutting board on top of that and I'm just going to come through and punch that hole so I use a smaller one on those ones, and then I also have, this is a 3 8 of an inch. If I could get bigger, I would use that, but this works pretty well. And the nice thing about doing anything that's leaf or nature themed is uh, you don't really have to worry about getting it perfect because it's nature. It's inherently perfect by just being what it is. Um, like no, you know, it's you look at a leaf and it has like a, an, a bug took a nibble out of it, or it has sun scald spots, or you know, it's it's still it's beautiful just how it is. So let your project be what it's gonna be. That's why I love 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 these leaf projects, um, because it kind of just frees you up a little bit. And you can see I'm just going through around the edges, punching these holes. I'm going to do that all the way around and then one at each uh, like tear duct like the inner corner and the outer corner of the eyes and then um, like I'm gonna get that but put it into a bit of time lapse and then we'll come back and start cutting it Okay, so we've punched all of our holes out. And you can see sometimes the punch doesn't go all the way through. I do try to get a good clean cut on the first try, but sometimes it just doesn't work out like that. So you can see, and now we play almost a game of connect the dots. So I have just a little craft knife here. And you could use scissors if you like, but and I'm going to be pulling towards myself because that's how I feel I have the most control 
over the tool. And it takes two cuts, but, and you can see I started at the edge of the hole that we punched and came all the way out towards the edge. So there's that. And you can see, I'm just gonna continue cutting, following the lines. And now, again, I'm going to continue uh, all the way around in time lapse, and then we will meet each other back here after we've done all of our cutting. And I'll show you guys how I like to clean up the edges a little bit. Um, like, and you can, you could really get stylistic with this. Like, see how that gave me a much nicer point? by cutting that way than it did over here where they're kind of chopped off. So don't hesitate to try different things. You can always shave off, like you can always cut more off, but it gets really hard to try to add more leather back on. So then I actually compost all of this stuff. Uh, Vermicompost takes right care of it. But yeah, so we're gonna go through and cut all of it and I'm gonna do it in time lapse, hopefully with some different perspectives so you can get a good idea of like how I'm doing it. Um, I'm still recovering from a busted knuckle, um, and it actually popped yesterday, so my hands are quite sore, but I can still kind of hold this, put my weight behind it, and just get some nice cuts through the leather. So, time lapse time. So here you can see I've cut the eyes out and um, they aren't exactly even <laughs> and that's something that I'm always always trying to work on because I really want my you know the mask especially around the eyes to be very symmetrical um, and they're not horribly off uh, but it's more than I'd like it to be um, so we can just kind of take it and shave down in different spots um, scissors can give you a little bit more control here Or you can just kind of slice and just whittle away a little bit at a time but also kind of close enough <laughs> um, but whenever I don't do the holes at the corners <clears throat> I can often get like where I've overcut like here you can see I really need to clean that up uh, there we go but now that we've done all of this, I'm actually going to move my cutting mat and I can use an edge beveler and I can strop it a little bit on a piece of scrap leather that has jeweler's rouge. Which I actually need to put more on there, but it's looking pretty rough. But that keeps it nice and nice and sharp. And then I'm going to come through and actually bevel the edges of everything we just cut. Um, which can be kind of time-consuming, but I think it really gives a really nice finished effect. There we go. And so I'm going to do that on the eyes and then around on all the edges, and that'll really help clean us up on where we have like some frassy bits.
so I've gone through and cut with my swivel knife. I use a very wide, large blade, but you could get this effect with any blade, really. Um, and cut some of the different lines in. You could trace them on with like a ball tip tool first or, you know, anything like that. Um, and you can see I actually have some little trace lines. But I had cased my leather first, which what that means is I held it under the water until no more bubbles came out. And then I let it... Uh, like drain like I pulled it out of the water and let the excess water drain off and then I actually caught a little bit of footage of the residual water on the surface soaking in um, and you want it so that whenever like if I were to come through and spritz it you want that water to still soak in you don't want it to be so saturated that um that it just pools and like slides off uh, so that's kind of my gauge sorry for all the dog noises they're super excited about being dogs today. Um, that's my gauge for knowing when is a good tooling wetness, is that it'll still take more water in, but it doesn't like have uneven dark spots. So now that the leather's at a good tooling consistency, um, like wetness, and I've got my lines cut, we can come through, and we have a lot of different tools that we can choose from. So here's just some different examples of tools that you can get. These are a lot of the um, <clears throat> kind of shaped tools. And then these are a lot of them that are like, I, I consider more carving. Like they do a very, they, they're a little less about, like this one, it's a star. Like, that's just how it is. But this one over here is a pear shader. And you can use it to get a lot of different effects. So I'm going to be using a textured pear shader. And this tool is available in about three different sizes. But now I'm going to come through and I'm actually just going to start doing the edges. And you can kind of tap it and walk it out. So let me zoom in a little bit more for you guys. So that hopefully you can see what it is that I'm doing. <clears throat> and I work with kind of the wide end going away from me but you just kind of tap it out and I like getting a little bit of texture just on the edges of my leaves with this and with it being having that hash mark pattern in it it stamps with a little bit more of a burnishing effect and I feel like it really lets me get uh, like some dyes and stuff in there especially if I use an antique gel so and honestly I'm not that great with it I've seen people work like magic with this tool <clears throat> I'm not there yet but with practice and persistence comes progress and I'm always trying new things to be like oh what do I like about this or what do I not like about this you know also I can use this same tool let me get a little bit more consistent around the edges here. I also like hitting it directly on the edge because I feel like it gives me a little bit more of a natural spread. And you can see I'm just whacking the crap out of it. But I can take this tool and imprint it with the smaller end close into that V of the uh, veins coming together and hit like that. Oops, and that one bounced on me, so... And so you can really get some different effects. You can kind of follow along the edges of your veins to get a nice little multidimensional effect. I really like that kind of effect there. But the more you do this, the more you'll find your style. And the more you'll kind of figure out and decide what you like and don't like and... You could also use, instead of using the pear shader there on that side, we could use, if I can find it, I have not been putting my tools away the way I should be. Uh, it's a textured beveling foot that does a very similar thing. I have a smaller version over here that I can use. But yeah, so just a textured beveler foot. And you can come through...
and it helps give you a really nice kind of sharp cut. See how that kind of works? And if it's not as smooth as you'd like it to be, you can just kind of come back over it. But it fades it out really nicely. And that's something that you can just come through and almost do a little bit of an undercut on all your little veins. And you can do however much or however little tooling as you'd like.
So I've come through with a one inch chip brush and just taken a little bit of this EcoFlow water-based <laughs> leather dye, bless you, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, she was trying so hard to be quiet and just gotten a little bit onto the tip of the brush like this. And I'm working on freezer paper today and with the waxy side up because it lets me blot the tip without wasting any of our pigment. And I'm going to flip it over and do the same technique here on the back. Um, and I'm just brushing in from the edges. Now keep in mind, whenever you're working with leather, if it's wet, it's going to soak the dye up faster than what it would if it's dry. So you're going to get bolder lines whenever it's wet. So if you want, a, if you wanted a really nice like feathery uh, gradient effect, um, working with a drier leather would you know, would kind of get you that effect, I think. And also, you know, different sides are different. If it's humid, you're going to get different effects. But just the more you do it, the more experience you're going to get with it. And so I'm just pulling in from the edges inward. And you can see even how it evolved from one side to the other. Let me zoom in for you so you can see. Um, quite blocky with a lot of dye on the brush and then less dye on the brush and it gets a lot more feathered. So it's, again, just do it whole bunches. And if since it's on the back, I can demonstrate. If you pull in from the inside, you're gonna get a more defined delineation of where the dye is and where it isn't. Whereas if you pull in from the edge, um, it's gonna give you a really nice, like brushed in fade out effect. And I'm trying to get all of the edges with the green as much as I can. Um, just because uh, with something like a mask where the backside may be visible from like above the head um, or around the face, I really want every little detail to just be beautiful and to work. So let me get a little bit more pigment on the brush. Now also with this being on the face, um, you're going to want to make sure to seal it really well because you don't want to take the mask off and have a green face. And that's something you got to be careful of too, but it'll just give us some natural speckling. But all this stain that's here on the wax paper speckled our mask on the front, which is okay. I don't mind it. I think it makes it look like beautiful little freckles, um, but it might drive you crazy. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. And then just stipling a little bit. I mean, get artsy fartsy with it. I mean, if, if now is definitely the time for getting artsy fartsy with it. And so here we have that dark brown. I'm gonna be pulling out a tan colored. Here we have a tan gel antique. You can see I've used this quite a bit. Um, but you wanna. Shake it up first, and I'm going to go ahead and prep myself a few sheets of paper towel. Can you give me that squirt bottle? Thank you. We're going to have water to help clean it off, the antique gel, and then we also have just some clean paper towel folded up. open it up and I'm just going to dump some in my hand and this my gloves are important and then I'm just gonna start rubbing this around trying to get it into all the little nooks and crannies and I did the uh, water-based dye first because jelly antiques are quite uh, waxy and so they'll repel um, any stains come from penetrating as much if you put them on top. Hey cutie. Um, and so to keep that green color on there, I did it first and now it'll, it'll be almost trapped in by the, uh, the jelly antique. So I'm going to put a little bit more in my hand. And whatever excess I have is going to be going on the back side. But again, I want to make sure that everything's nice and antiqued up. This is really going to bring out all of the tooling that we did around the edges and around the veining. Or at least that's the idea. 
so be super generous with it. Okay, and then I'm going to kind of wipe the excess off, and I'm going to flip it over and just quick rub. And you can actually spray a little bit to water it down, because I don't need it to be as intense as what it was on the front. I just want color there to make it look like effort was put forth. So just rubbing this around and it still dies really well even when it's diluted it just won't settle into the crevices as much and I really I do love using just a gloved hand for this because so much of this pigment in medium gets soaked up by a sponge okay so now I'm gonna wipe the excess off my hands There we go. And I'm just going to start wiping the excess off on the back side. And now we can lift this. Not only does it leave a super cool imprint, like, that's really neat. Um, I actually kind of want to save that, so I'm going to set that off to the side. And you'll want to be careful setting down paper towel because that is going to stick to the back side of the leather if I don't work quick. But now I'm going to use a clean portion of our paper towel because otherwise I'm just smearing around the same stain. But there we go. And if any of the paper towel sticks on there, it'll just come off with some water. Um, there we go. But I'm going to set this off to the side and let it dry just a little bit and then we are going to start molding it and that way it won't be just a flat piece it'll be it'll become three-dimensional and really start to have a life and character of its own so I'm gonna let it dry and then we will meet we, well not dry completely though but just dry to where the uh, antique gel isn't glistening anymore that's what I'm looking for so I'll meet you all right back here shortly so now you can see our leather has dried enough that the antique gel is no longer like super glisteny. Um, but, and there's no real way to demonstrate this, it is still quite damp to the touch. Maybe. Like if I press, I'm able to wick just a very little bit of moisture out of the leather. And I'm going to be using a modeling tool which has this really nice kind of like spoon end. You could actually use a spoon. You could use like a smooth texture pear shape tool. But one of my favorite tools to use is this is an edge slicker and it has a very pointier point, like a smaller point and then a very nice like round point. And so I'm actually going to come through and start just shaping around actually the first step I guess we just smush this onto my face so it's gonna be off camera but I'm gonna smush it onto my face real quick but I'm not holding it on there for too long because I do not want my face to be green and brown so much as those are my colors <laughs> and just the heat from my face I'm actually gonna turn this around so you can see got my hair pulled back and if I were wise, I would put like some sort of like Vaseline or something on, but I don't want it to get onto the leather. But if I end up with leather dye on my face, that's just life now. Um, so you can see I'm just pressing this part in here to shape around the bridge of my nose. And then just shaping around the curves of my cheeks. And the heat from my face is actually doing quite a bit, I think, to help set the leather. Like, or at least I can feel the leather heating up. And it wants to kind of stick to me. And so technically, I'm done. Like, we could stop here. You know, just uh, put on a little piece of um, elastic on the inside or however you like, like punch little holes. 
but I am going to keep sculpting. I want this, I don't want this flat at all. So I'm gonna flip this back around, but you can see the little bit of shape that that got there. So let's flip it in. Thank goodness, no green. We got dark circles and all sorts of stuff, but no green. Um, so I'm gonna flip this back around and we'll keep sculpting. This is a perfect opportunity to have, to have like a face cast of yourself because then we could just let it dry on the face cast. But you can see it's very eager to just flatten back out again, but it also will kind of shape back up. And I like to really exaggerate the shape that it's gonna be taking. And I'm gonna come around the eye holes here and actually shape them kind of inward, just a little bit of rolling with my fingers. Pushing up from behind and just pinching and really pinching and lifting and shaping. I feel like it gives it a whole lot more dimension if you're not able to see that bare edge. So there we go. Coming through. And you can keep encouraging it different ways as you uh, sculpt and as it dries. But all of these little tips and things here, we can take and stretch from behind with our edge slicker. And you can kind of see where the tip's traveling underneath the leather. And that's just stretching and shaping. And then we can take this and twist it however which way that we like. We can really, really stretch it and pinch and just I mean the more exaggerated it is the it'll relax as it dries and so you'll be able to kind of maintain that shape a little bit I mean really folding it but then as it spreads out it maintains it so yeah just twisting they don't all have to be going the same way you could have it be as symmetrical or as wild as you like and you can kind of fold one way or the other way. I personally prefer it folded towards the back, but I don't know, you could do however you like. You could have it fold towards the front, make it be all pokey outy. Shaping and then twisting. Like, the best thing you can do for yourself here is to experiment. Ooh, gravity. <laughs> is experiment and just try your best to uh, explore and discover what you like. So, twisting around. I really love the twisty tips. <laughs> you can see I haven't sealed it yet and I'm getting a little bit of green off. But that's okay. And then I'm just pinching and forming. I really want this nice and kind of three-dimensional. And then if you have one of those styrofoam heads from like Hobby Lobby or Michaels or anything like that, um, you could lay it on its backside and set this up to dry on the face. But I'm going to press it onto my face one more time just to get one one last shaping of like the bridge of the nose and the shape of the eyes. So let me flip this around so you can see then. I saw it being flat. Now with that texture added, we can put it on. No, I'm not gonna lie guys, I feel kind of fabulous. I'm just saying, ah! <laughs> all covered in leather dye. But um, I really like the shaping around the eyes. It gives me some room that I could do like little sparkles or I could do it real dark. You could wear it higher up on your face, like just however. But yeah, so I'm just gonna hold this and you could actually at this point put some saran wrap over the inside, like cut out the eye holes, but then hold it up over your face and just hold it for a bit and really let it dry and cure and what I mean with that is just completely dry in that shape. So there we are.
and that is our mask I'm gonna let it dry and then we will come back and seal it and do any kind of final touches so now that our mask is pretty well dry I'm going to go through with my EcoFlow either super sheen or satin sheen um the the super is just very glossy the satin is a little bit more matte you know satin finish um but I'm gonna go through with the super sheen actually on the inside so let me break that child block and I'm gonna go through this will gunk up your brushes really bad so you got to be sure to uh that either do it on a brush that you're not that attached to or be sure to immediately rinse it out um because it's kind of water repellent once it's uh dry so it's really hard to like i've tried just re-soaking the brushes and that doesn't work you could spray this on uh, i really like tandy leathers spray version that they have But I'm all out of that. So now I'm just going to go through and paint on very liberally on the inside. I'm way more concerned about the inside being sealed than I am the outside. Because the last thing I want is for myself or for a client to take their mask off and have green face. Uh, because it's leather dye, so it's kind of hard to get out of your skin once it's in there. So just coming through. And I'm probably going to do two or three coats. Another sealant that I really like is PYM, it's P-Y-M-2, like the Roman numeral for two, and uh, it's an aerosol can that's very flexible once it's dry, um, and so I think that's great for leather products also. And it's just a nice kind of like semi-satin sheen. Uh, the more you put it on, the shinier it gets, but that's probably what I'm going to coat the front in, because I don't want anything building up in all the little tooling marks and crevices and things of this mask. So yeah, just going to continue bringing it around. I do like this as a varnish for the inside too, because um, it's not like the masks that I've made and worn with this finish on the inside, I don't feel like it bothers my eyes. Whereas like I've used like a gum, I don't know, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I've used other things in just the strong smells or um, the greasy textures of it. Uh, well, I don't mind as much for on the inside of armor. I just don't like it on my face. So that's something to keep in mind. But just keep coming through. And usually by the time I get around to, like I'm finished with one coat, where I started applying it is dry enough that I can start applying a second coat. A nice tip for if um, you're finding that your leather isn't keeping its form as much as you want is to uh, put a little bit of Elmer's glue into your casing water. But experiment on some scrap first because it may affect the way that your stain takes to the leather. But it just helps it stay a little bit more rigid uh, over time. You know, but it will uh, re-soften if you, like, submerge it. But it'll hold up pretty well to, like, humidity and things. That was a tip that was given to me by a leather crafter who did a lot of outdoor craft shows. And I was like, what do you do when it rains? And all of, because, you know, it was raining and all of, all of everybody's stuff was getting wet. And I was like, isn't this really bad for your leather? And they were like, yeah, but, you know, and we started talking shop and I felt like I learned a lot from them. It's been years since I've seen them on the road, though. I think we met them down in, like, Arkansas or something. Memories. But, yeah, so I'm just going to keep going through and applying this. And same way that I'm applying it to the back side is how I would apply it to the front. I don't really worry about slicking the edges, um, except for the eye holes. Like, I don't slick the edges of the entire mask, but... At this point, everything that you're doing, short of sealing, um, is artistic discretion. So do whatever you feel inspired to. And uh, if you're experimenting with something that you've never seen or heard before, try it on scrap before you try it on your finished product. Just because they call it scrap for a reason, and you don't want to do mad science experiments on something that you've spend been spending the past two days on. Just to see it, like 
fall to pieces or be irrevocably, like, I don't know, not the way you wanted it to be. But yeah, just painting the inside with the stain. But yeah, I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to spray it with the PIM on the front side. And then we're going to uh, attach, you could poke two kind of small holes and thread some stretchy cord through it. Or you could put uh, leather cord with an adjustable knot, which I think is what we're going to do for this one. I want to keep it with a very nice natural look. So I'll get attaching that in as time lapse and then I'll meet you all right back here. Okay guys, so our mask is all done. I'm gonna try it on. Now I don't have any big lashes or anything on right now, but I do have some big hair to get over. There we go. Just pull that knot down. I like the adjustable knot. It's actually a little too tight. There we go. But I also have like super poochy under eye area. Hey Randy, what do you think? That looks really good. But I also have like just the chubbiest cheek so whenever I smile it kind of pokes me in the eye a bit. Um, <laughs> so what I would do is I would just get in here and you can kind of shape it a little bit. The more you wear something like this, especially if it's warm or if you sweat or anything like that, um, it's going to mold to your face a little better. But I'm really excited and very pleased with how this came out. So um, there'll be links down below for the templates, for my Facebook, for my Instagram, for my Patreon, for everything like that. If you guys are interested in making your own uh, or designing your own template or just anything like that, if you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. Um, uh, you can share pictures to my Facebook wall or to, uh, tag me on Instagram, all that good stuff. And then also, if you do enjoy my free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, uh, as well as participate in my fairy house giveaways, which speaking of giveaway, this super cool thing, that I'm trying to unbury is now completely dry. I'm going to be sealing it and like I think I'm going to frame it and just put it in kind of like a cool woodsy frame. Maybe make one. I don't know but I'm going to be framing it and giving it away um, on my Tuesday live stream uh, that's coming up. So we do all sorts of different stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, we do fairy house giveaways, all different things, but I do do a giveaway every Tuesday. Yeah, I think I'm going to have that shape out a little bit more. This is why it's always good to test wear your stuff. And everybody has different tastes, so, and shaped faces and everything, so customizable, yay! <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I have giveaways every Tuesday. And uh, to participate in that, you can pledge as little as a dollar. It gives you one entry into all my giveaways. If you pledge $5, it gives you five entries into all my giveaways. And then if you pledge $10 or more, you get access to even more behind the scenes exclusive content, all of my digital download content, as well as um, entries into the giveaways and different things. And then if you pledge $20 or more, you get my monthly craft crates mailed out to you. 
that feature handmade beads and all sorts of different things. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I do hope that it was helpful to you and I will see y'all in my next video. So happy crafting. Bye. <laughs>